Feel free to ask questions. Uh, you from the audience can ask questions uh, anytime you want. You just raise your hand and there will be someone here to give you the microphone. Um, and you guys as well, you, if you want to respond some to another one's uh, question, just, just do it. Um, first, I, I, I would start with Jaela. Um, well, uh, I'll just do a, a first round of questions and then you guys, um, everyone can help me with this job. Um, I was thinking about uh, the whole program and um, for me, it's, uh, to date, it, it, it appeared more that there's some themes that um, connect the films maybe, which is uh, a kind of dialectics between like extreme exposure like in pornography or in publicity, advertising, I mean. Uh, and on the other hand, disappearance or missing or vanishing that um, in some of the, I mean, in the three films that uh, we have this kind of dialectics between uh, uh, an extreme exposure and a disappearance. And in your film, Jaela, I guess, um, uh, there's something very interesting because uh, I'm, I, I'm sure you, you guys know, but uh, one of the particular things about uh, the dictatorship, the last dictatorship in Argentina was that uh, not only they killed uh, 30,000 people, but they hide the, they, they've hidden their bodies. So that, that's, uh, the bodies were, were missing, they're still missing, and um, this is this is a kind of limbo, right? The, the, the families, all the relatives, they are, they live in a kind of limbo because the peop they know for sure the people, the person is dead, but there's no body, there's no visible evidence of the, the crimes that they committed. So uh, you have to deal not with a regular death, uh, but with a disappearance, which is a kind of, a, a different kind of, of, of mourning, right? Uh, I don't. I don't even know. That there's there's a lot of there's a whole tradition in Argentinian film dealing with that kind that kind of impossible mourning about uh, the dictatorship. And in your film, I guess you you take a, a, a very interesting uh, take on that because you deal with publicity, with advertising. I mean, with all those images, all that stream of images that that are extremely explicit. They're all about visibility, right? to make things as visible as possible. But in the sound, we're hearing sounds of water that, of course, remind us that um, a lot of the, the bodies were thrown in the water, right? In the river or in the sea. Um, and you're dealing, of course, with this character, which, well, I mean, this person who, who, was, dis who was forcedly disappeared. Uh, but you choose the publicity the most visible place to find uh, a person who disappeared, right? So I, 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 I was trying to, I mean, maybe I can ask you, um, what, what, what was your, I mean, your impulse to do that? I mean, how, what, uh, looking at publicity, uh, how did you, did you deal with disappearance, uh, uh, dealing with this extreme visibility that uh, advertising is? Okay. Um, gracias por la pregunta, eh, gracias por quedarse. Um, en realidad, este trabajo fue comisariado. A mí me, me entregaron tres horas de material de pu distintas publicidades, a mí y a otros cinco cineastas, con la consigna de que hagamos lo que quisiéramos. Ok, uh, good evening and thank you to, to be here. Uh, in fact, this was a work that was um, given to uh, three, three, three uh, no? Uh, five, sorry, five person. Uh, they um, they give us some publicity, and we have to make something about with this publicity. Un poco respondía a la voluntad del equipo del museo de sacar los archivos que estaban guardados y que habían sido recientemente rescatados y ponerlos a disposición a crear nuevas lecturas, nuevos materiales con eso. Pero la consigna en sí era muy libre. Los cinco teníamos el mismo material y cada uno hizo cosas totalmente distintas. There was a material that was uh, created in the museum, and uh, was uh, they want to show this, and they give us the um, the freedom to uh, um, make with this publicity these five people whatever we we want. Yes, the museum has rescued this material. Um, 
Entonces, eh, a partir de recibir ese material, eh, obviamente el, 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 lo primero que, que sentía que tenía que hacer con eso, las, las imágenes eran muy atractivas y te dejaban seducir muy fácilmente, pero a la vez era muy tirada en ese material porque al ser publicidad y cada segundo cuesta una fortuna, eran imágenes muy rápidas. Um, the image was uh, seduce us and that we can make many things with this, but at the same time was costly. No, the publicity was costly and we did, we need to use it uh, very fast. Y primero eso, me dejé seducir por, esa, por esas imágenes tan atractivas, muy cinematográficas. En ese entonces, en Argentina, muchos directores de cine eh, hacían publicidad, había muchos comerciales, me acuerdo de uno especial que era un make-up, era un remake de Blow Up, por ejemplo. Y el primer intento que, que hice con ese material, quise hacer un, una especie de Guy Madden, eh, vertigo, como un remake, con Cat People, la película de Turner. <risa> Well, it doesn't matter, but what okay. I when well, I I try to to make a, a remake with this material to like a Gun Maddie film like Sabertigo with other film, but I, I didn't like it so much. And then I have a really f a few time to make it, so I start to research about what's about uh, each film, each each publicity. Yes. It's understand, yeah. So, entonces eh, busqué información sobre cada material, googleando eh, cada nombre de cada publicidad. Okay. Uh, she make a research in, uh, through Google, uh, trying to find out what is the each publicity uh, um, talk, talk about. Y en una de esas, cuando llegué a la publicidad del Jockey Club, encontré que había una modelo que había sido eh, montonera, activista, y que desapareció en la última dictadura. Eh, a partir de eso busqué, fui a, al Museo de la Memoria, que fue un ex centro clandestino en Argentina, puse su nombre en, en, en la computadora que, que almacena estos datos y encontré su ficha, encontré una foto de ella. Ok. Y uh, amongst this uh, publicity, she found one about the jockey club, and in this advertisement there was a, a, a woman, there was an actress, that is the, the actress from, from her film, uh, she started uh, finding in the archive uh, about more about her life. I didn't know before, así que fue un hallazgo encontrarla en ese en medio de ese material tan atractivo. Le pregunté a unos amigos, a algunas personas si la conocían, si sabían de su historia y, y nadie sabía nada, no, no, no se sabía nada y a partir de eso deseché ideas anteriores y sabía que, que lo que quería era traer, tener el gesto de volver a traerla, de poder volver a verla. Um, she's starting uh, also requesting some people, some friends, about uh, if she knows this, this, this woman, this actress, and nobody knows uh, any about her. And then she is starting, uh, she um, uh, starting uh, thinking on this idea to to make her film, and of course to bring uh, again bring back this actress to the to the memory, no. Y a partir de eso es donde siento que realmente me apropié el material al también poder tener una re relectura en el presente, ¿no? Que en ese momento, obviamente, no, no, o después incluso no estaban las relaciones de saber dadas para poder entender la magnitud de lo que sucedía. Eh, y es a partir de, de encontrarla es donde quería de alguna manera conservar esa ambigüedad que puede tener la imagen, que puede mantener un sentido inicial o ese indicio de verdad, decía como Lee, ¿no? Como ese indicio de verdad que, que aparece, que es una publicidad, pero que también es un espejo de dos caras, ¿no? Como que oculta también otra cosa. Ok. Uh, I will try to resume. <laughs> um, uh, she said that um, she wants, uh, she appropriated her, the, this image and, and this idea that she is starting working on that. And this is an ambiguity on the publicity, ¿no? In the, in the image in general? In the archive, uh -huh. yes, it's okay. so in the archive that it's like a, a mirror of two faces. Mm -hmm. That it's it's conserved the the initial proposal to the. Por el que la película fue hecha. Uh -huh. sí, dime. Uh, I don't know. No, dime en castellano. Ah, el, que conserva el sentido inicial por la por el cual la película fue hecha, pero que a la vez hay otro sentido oculto en la imagen. En en esta en estas dos sí, caras. Sí. Yeah, and um, this um, the, the publicity, not the publicity. This publicity has like it's like a mirror that has two faces, and she's starting. This is as a starting point for for her film. Mm -hmm. okay. um, well, if I, yeah. I can continue because it's the same idea, but it me pareció muy paradójico que en, en la publicidad en ese 
terreno de ficción absoluta donde se promete una vida perfecta, donde se vende esa idea de idea perfecta, eh, aparezca ella, ¿no? Entonces, a partir de ahí hice un recorte de las publicidades y utilicé solo las de la dictadura para, generar, para de alguna manera, trabajar con esta paradoja. Ok, there is a paradox um, that uh, the publicity gives you, like, uh, te da fama, dijiste, ¿no? Así, que de la publicidad daba, daba, tenía algo bueno. Sí, que proyecta esta idea Ajá. de, de uh, uh, The publicity projects uh, an idea of uh, a success, of joy, but at the same time, uh, que al mismo tiempo? En Argentina, okay. mientras se veían esas publicidades. At the same time, in Argentina, when the, these advertisements were uh, showcased, there were also this dictature, and there were people also, no, the people that were there were people disappearing also at the same time. Entonces quería conservar, volviendo a tu pregunta, ambas cualidades, ¿no? Las imágenes atractivas de la publicidad, con ese ritmo también tan vertiginoso con el que maneja, pero a la vez que cuando aparezca ella, eh, puede aparecer desde otro registro, ¿no? Y ahí, a, a partir de ahí, también viene el sonido, que como lo dijiste, el agua en Argentina, si bien no lo pensé inicialmente... Eh. She wants to keep this idea of this, um, this advertisement, that this is so fast, this, this idea, at the same time, with the idea that uh, this actress, this woman, is behind and has another story, ¿no? Eh, y en relación al sonido, que si bien yo quise tomar el mar porque aparece en la publicidad de ella, está en una casa de playa, después también es verdad que eh, tiene un significante muy grande en Argentina porque fue el lugar donde tiraban los cuerpos. Entonces quería utilizar de una, de otra vez ese sonido. Ok. And you're right when you said that the, the water was like a line that uh, crossed this, this idea, because in fact the, the, this advertisement or this part of this, this advertisement were filmed near the beach, in a, in a beach house, but at the same time, as you said, uh, there were people that were disappeared in the water, no? Yeah. Oh, and just, just insisting on that a little bit, because you mentioned something about the rhythm of the film, and there is this... Uh, you have a very strong stream uh, and fast stream of images, like you are immersed in a very f rapid uh, stream of publicity, and then you stop. It's it's as if you 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 stop and you calm down and you start to look at her, her face, right? And um, it's it's as if uh, you could plunge us into this stream of advertising and this stream of extreme. Uh, visibility, and then from that uh, uh, take something and and bring it to the light. Something that has been uh, disappeared, right? Because uh, even even I mean the 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 the, the story about uh, Marianne that you tell us at the end in the credits, uh, we only know afterwards, but. Even her image in those publicities, I mean, this is, this is the only one, right? Like, as, you, as you mentioned, so it will it would pass if we if you if we if if we continued with that same stream, it would pass like the other images, uh, as we see as we, as we've seen, right? So, but you decide to stop the time and to concentrate on that on that uh, face, and perhaps time and rhythm still have to, uh, also have to do with with uh, visibility and to give visibility right and also add of course um, okay. um, I also had kind of like the feeling when I'm watching this watching this film that it's um, like regarding um, the water and yes. it's, it's off yeah. now it's on oh yes. okay <laughs> um, I was kind of sitting in a boat on an ocean because mm. the editing is like, it goes in and out and it goes around and it pulls me. So it kind of feels like, I, I, I didn't know about the water, but I, when I was watching it, I kind of had the feeling I'm on a boat in the middle of an ocean and something tries to like catch me and pull me down and swirl me around. So was that also on purpose, uh, the editing, like that it uh, makes such a swirling movement? Sí. Um, para mí era importante que, que la película conserve la cualidad de las imágenes para las cuales fueron creadas, o sea que sigan siendo publicidades, pero a medida que avanzaba también quería enrarecer esas imágenes. Okay. Um, 
the purpose was to um, uh, maintain the uh, the strongest of this publicity of this advertisement, but at the same time she wants at at, at some point to try to uh, stop and, and reinforce the, the the other idea. No? Um, sí, enrarecer, no, como enrarecer esa publicidad. Es, um, incluso hay, hay partes en las que decido mantener las marcas, que para mí era era importante. Um, y a partir de, ese, de, 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 esa, de, de esa, con esa vertiginosidad y, y a medida que avanza la película, poder ir encontrándola hasta, como decías, detenernos en ella, porque la, una, cuando me entero de, sobre su historia y sobre lo que tenía en esas imágenes que me entregaron, eh, y al saber que no mucha gente la conocía, eh, quería volver a traerla de alguna manera, ¿no? como ese gesto de volver a traerla. Y, e incluso... Perdón. <risa> okay. uh. Uh, she wants, uh, as she said, uh, to maintain this uh, rapidness of this advertisement, but at the same time trying to stop and to reinforce the idea uh, that this uh, woman has disappeared. No? Uh, y después, dudé mucho sobre la ubicación del título y sobre el título en general, ¿no? Um, pero me parecía bien que, que, que aparezca esa publicidad con toda esa fuerza y que al final se haga esa pregunta y de alguna manera lo dudé bastante porque temía que fuese como una especie de golpe bajo, pero a la vez eh, es un poco lo que me sucedió a mí, ¿no? Como después de ver todas esas imágenes tan atractivas que, que, que venden un, o proyectan una idea de, de éxito o de felicidad eh, o de la vida perfecta, aparezca también eh, estas huellas, ¿no? Y incluso, perdón. Okay. It's okay. Um... She wants to use you know, this idea at the, same, at the same time trying to, to, to get this and she also uh, feel this, uh, the, this success that these ideas, this advertisement brings at the same time trying to get the idea of the, of the, the other part of the story. This, this, this woman has, has, has disappeared. I mean, this is also a very important part of the story at the same time trying to uh, use this image with the other part of, of the story. Y además, y que paradójicamente hoy la publicidad sea también archivo, ¿no? Entonces, de alguna manera, la publicidad se convirtió en documento. Ok, y al mismo tiempo, el advertisement right now is also pint, uh, part of the, of the, of the story, is, uh, son archivos, ¿no? Uh, in, said, this the, in this in particular, are part of the story of Argentina, they're also archived, and also are part of the, of, of, of the story, of, the, no, of, the, of your story, you said, uh, um. los archivos... Uh, no. <laughs> Um, well, that, yes, yeah, it's a document right now also, there are documents also. Yes, uh, y sobre, sobre el sonido y sobre el mar y ese ritmo, um, un poco respondía a esto que el material que recibí no recibí masters, recibí cortes finales y las publicidades eran muy rápidas uh -huh. y era muy difícil editar. And about the rhythm, uh, she do not receive the whole material, she receives only parts of this material, and that she wants to use this uh, to make this, this rhythm. Y a partir de ahí ese ritmo vertiginoso. Y, y sobre, regresando a la idea inicial, eh, y sobre esto de que la publicidad hoy es como un documento, eh, para mí realmente es como un shock, eh, de alguna manera, eh, ver este cortometraje y estar hablando de Marianne en este momento. Uh, uh, Returning to this idea that uh, these advertisements right now are document for for her is uh, very uh, important to uh, to to see how is 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 uh, use this this material now with the story of of Marianne. Porque en Perú en este momento eh, estamos viviendo una dictadura y y este 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 cortometraje a mí me permitió entrar eh, de alguna manera acercarme. Eh, a muchos luchadores sociales que, que hoy en este momento están encarcelados. Okay, because we in my country we are now uh, living like a strong uh, regime and uh, this uh, film also trying to uh, get me closer to people that are now uh, fighting. Yes, uh, we are living in a dictatorship. Uh, so when I came back to to Peru for living, uh, the dictatorship starts. They are the los militares nos encar en estar encarcelando eh, a la gente que va a protestar. Ok, she said that there are, sorry? The government. Okay. She said that the, uh, the government right now are um, using force against the, the people that are protesting in, in Peru. Y casualmente cuando, when I travel to the south of Peru at Ayacucho to, 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 
to, to stay there as a holiday. I know uh, some friends, I knew some friends, and I showed this uh, short film because they desconfiaban. Yeah, has no trust on Has no trust on me because I am from Lima, from the capital. So I showed this and I filmed with they. Uh, and then when I came back to my house, like two weeks then, all the, the people that I have know, know it, in that case, now uh, they fueron llevados a un ex centro clandestino. Okay, that um, after she uh, she um, shown this uh, film to some friends in Ayacucho, that is the southern city of Peru, uh, the people at the beginning has no trust on her uh, because she's from the capital. Uh, but then after showing this film, the people trust her, and these people she met there, uh, the uh, after were uh, sent to a detention center. Que si, si bien no es un ex centro de tortura, hoy sigue funcionando y es una entidad pública y que se usa para arrestar y amedrentar. Y e inmediatamente después estas personas hoy están encarceladas y están eh, con una prisión preventiva, es decir, sin sentencia. Eh, entonces para mí fue muy paralizante de alguna manera poder hablar de, y hacer este cortometraje y hablar de ella y que en este momento en Perú esté sucediendo lo, una dictadura. Okay. Uh, she uh, makes like um, the, the, there is a similar uh, situation between for her in Argentina and in Peru right now, uh, because these people, for example, were detained and are now in this detention center uh, without being judged, uh, still being, uh, being judged. Thanks. Um, perhaps we could move to to Valentin now, um, because I I have some. I mean, it's it's kind of the the same idea, but uh, with your film, what I think is um, you're dealing with a repertoire of images, uh, consciously consciously dealing with a repertoire of of images, and this repertoire. I mean, th there's a lot of repertoires you're you're dealing, but one of them is definitely pornography, right? You're you're kind of dealing with this. References and Jürgen may might uh, jump in later to to complexify things, um, but it's it's kind of a reference that we're dealing of de dealing with all the time. I mean, um, like eighties, uh, perhaps some uh, uh, porn films from the eighties, uh, some kind of of staging, the music, some sometimes, and this is this is I mean it's pornography, so it's the it's always on on the the shadow of the film uh, this reference, but uh, in the film you decide like to suggest more than to show explicitly bodies and nakedness, right? And perhaps I could ask you that. I mean, you're dealing with uh, filming sex all the time. They're, they talk about it. They mm, suggest it a lot of times, but you decide not to be so explicit. So what's what was that decision? How how did you think about that? And what could you say about that? Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, yeah, I mean, this is the 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 decision of what do you show, no, and what don't you show, and uh, what is actually like a, um, when they're talking to the police. Uh, when the, the in investigation start, you could think that they were shooting something much harder than what we saw before, no? Like because, and I think that's something I want. Like this was in like uh, something um, uh, I gave as a direction, no, to the people who got integrated to kind of like uh, talk about things. Uh, they could have been living no or like also the um, the inspector no investigating being very interested for their intimacy but uh, uh, and also I mean uh, the the idea was to say okay this is like this crew is doing like uh, a, a libertin uh, costume film and yes it's like st at the end we have this image also in front of the cinema with the uh, the Lamont de Lady Chatelet, you know, which is like a reference to, I would say, like a 70s kind of uh, soft porn film. And maybe they were doing something like this, you no? Know, today, like uh, in the countryside, like uh, kind of, uh, I don't know, like uh, pl pl 
playful and uh, and 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 I I don't know, like I f I felt that um, it's not so much about uh, of course like this uh, shooting was kind of a pretext no to 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 have like uh, also maybe a playful pretext no to kind of uh, create a situation where um which will also uh charge the film with the suspense no like this kind of like uh, um and also maybe give it uh, a color a certain color no and uh yeah and I've, i think the decision to not to show uh, and i didn't know when we started how explicit the film is going to be, at least this uh, first part, no? which is just uh, the, the first 20 minutes, and then we switch into another genre. And, uh, and, I, and I decided uh, to, to not become very explicit because I was afraid that this will take too much uh, attention, right? Because at the end, like, uh, maybe it was different fi like different things i wanted to talk about and this was for me it was like uh, a starting point no to to jump off and kind of like uh, give a whole like atmosphere to the rest of the film and uh, and at the same time it was also something i i felt for me at least like uh, doing this first part uh, which was also um um, very like uh, uh, which has a kind of like very elliptic uh, narration no like and uh, um, for me it was also in a form uh, a celebration no in uh, like of uh, I don't know it's like if they having uh, like um, this kind of different representations and uh, the way like they they work together the the way they interact together um, for me uh, at least like from my um, personal point of view I see it as something which is also uh, um, like a, a group no like uh, enjoying themselves like what by what they're doing no mm -hmm. so it's also maybe like a celebration of fi uh, filmmaking no mm -hmm. maybe Jürgen can can help us here <laughs> uh, because um, Jürgen is uh, the festival director of the porn film festival in Berlin and uh, he might have so much more repertoire about um, erotic and porn cinema and how 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 did you deal with valentin's film i mean what with with all those images in your head from years of working with explicit cinema um how how did you respond to to his film i mean no, um, it's, it's definitely different for you i, I guess <laughs> now first of all i was astonished that i was asked to be on a panel here you know so and so you know i'm not an academic you know so and i got this email and then i wrote them back and said you know okay before i can say i, I would uh, join i have to see the films you know and then i watched the films and then i thought okay i can relate to the films so and i was thinking yeah okay why do they invite me because I do something, I do the porn film festival, I had a porn company, blah, blah, blah. So they want to talk about porn. But so, and before we went to the cinema, we had dinner together and we talked a little bit. For me, Valentin's film is not a pornographic film. So, but it depends, <coughs> you know, how do you define pornography? which is a stupid thing to do because when you try to define pornography, you work in the system what the society we live in says what pornography is, you know. For me, um, I don't use the term pornography, even I choose for the porn film festival to use the term porn because I knew that I get more attention uh, in when, uh, instead of when I call it erotic film festival or kinky film festival. So it was true, I got a lot of attention. So I uh, prefer to use the word explicit, but I was thinking when I watched the film here the second time, so I could read, you know, like I could read the film also as a pornographic film because there's a lot of body fluids in the film. There is a lot of penetration in the film. 
there's a lot of begehren in the film. So when you use these kind of standards and to explain it, you know, pornography is one of the three genres where body fluids are very important, which is um, pornography, horror films, you know, which he has in his film, and melodrama. There's a lot of tears in his films, you know. And penetration is not about dicks and vulvas, you know. Penetration can be, you know, he's very explicit in like the fingers in the mouth and all this stuff, you know, and the biting of the zombies, you know. So this is all penetration, you know. So when you read it in these terms, then you can say he has made a porn film. But it's not, I would say, you know, only to say one thing is, you know, to say why I think, why I think personally, no, I think it's definitely not a porn film. So um, it's a great film. That's for me in the important thing. A film I enjoy to watch. And then let's say a different thing, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of very clever humor in your film. And let's say a lot of porn films miss a lot of clever humor. There is no humor in porn films. There should be more humor in porn films, but at the moment, I know some filmmakers, you know, who try to do humorous porn films and to have a more entspannt blick on sexuality, you know, so, but it's still not enough humor in porn films. That's fascinating how I mean, it's ob obviously it's not a, a, a pornographic film. It's not made for that, but uh, it's. Uh, I mean, it's. Yeah, you know, as I said, you it's know, a lens. I, when I saw it, I watched the film on my computer. You know, so I have a small image, and then when you see a film on the screen, I thought, you know, it's a great film, but it's not a porn film. It's an explicit film, mm -hmm. or a film which deals with, uh, you know, begehren, desire. You know, mm -hmm. so and this is. A very Valentin's film is very intimate. You know, to put uh, your finger in somebody's mouth is a very intimate um, communication. You know, and it's a sexual communication. You know, but um, therefore it is. You, you know, but I wouldn't use the uh, term pornography because it's so negatively con connotated. You know, so and it is from out of a system which I don't want to deal with because there's so much morality with in this which, you know, we we don't have the chance to get rid of, you know, so that's the problem, you know, so. Yeah, we're trying to, I mean, to, to uh, accept the word the word porn, pornography or porn from a moral judgment, right? I, we're, it's just a lens, an aesthetic lens to, to read the film. Actually, we'll have a pornographic film here at the yeah. Critics Week. So <laughs> so stay tuned that we, we have one. No, you uh, know, I wouldn't the program. <laughs> no, you know, even yeah, it's Cafe Flesh you're <laughs> showing on uh, Saturday night. We have shown Cafe Flesh. Uh, I saw Cafe Flesh in 1982 in New York in a cinema. <laughs> So, and uh, I showed the film 10 years ago at the Porn Film Festival. And for me, I wouldn't call it, you know, I was, you know, when I was reading your program, and I think when I remember correctly, there was a photo of the film and there was künstlerische pornography. Mm -hmm. And then I said, why do they use the word künstler? Who, to whom do you have to justify mm -hmm. that you are showing this film, you know? So, uh, whom, you know, it's, it's a great funny film. And this is a film which is explicit and has great humor. It has a different kind of humor than your humor, but for the time it's really funny and you should watch it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah stay with the invitation. Uh, perhaps Elke, we could stay a, a little bit on the same question because um, your film Love Mobile also deals with how to to shoot bodies and how how explicit you can be. I mean, when shooting uh, some abo the body of someone, yeah. uh, you you can or should or you, the choice about that, right? Uh, you f your film she made a film that we didn't see about uh, prostitution and. Um, Sex work, sorry, um, and uh, and you you had to face that decision, right? 
uh, until until when you until where you can film until I mean how to choose these kind of uh, dynamics between showing and not showing um, how was that for you and how do you relate to maybe to Valentin's or to other films that we you've seen um, first of okay where do I start um, I start with Valentin <laughs> because we're here because of you um, so for me also this is definitely not a porn film it's rather like a sexual central film about different types of desire uh, of different kind of love some some love feeds some love uh, bondage some love um, objects and some love each other in which kind of form um, so ever and so it's more f like the whole film I really had to laugh all the time inside. It's a very humorous film and I enjoyed watching it. Even though there's not like a real plot line, it's just like I was totally curious, okay, what comes up next? It's like a, more like a free floating odyssey. You don't know where it's going, but it's going somewhere. It's fun to watch the, the, the actors, which I think some of them are also um, uh, line darsteller. Um, Almost amateur they're actors? Uh, almost amateur they're actors? Yeah, they're almost all of them no yeah. are, are not non-professional actors. Non-professional actors. It was like just, just really, really nice to watch them being in the role and trying to find it on screen. And you too trying to find the film within the film as like a double, you know, like film about filmmakers. And um, there were so many genres you touched. You never went into a genre, you never went into porn, you never went into crime, you never went, but you kind of touched it. And then just saying, okay, I tease it. And then I leave you with this and I go to the next genre. So um, yeah, I just can say it was great watching it. So, um, And then your, um, your question was like um, showing explicit content in my film is it completely different topic because um, if you deal with real people with real protagonists um, it is kind of exploitive if you do it if it's not the constant and um, so I also had this uh, question and I had one um, one sex worker who was not in my film but with her we had real s we were shooting real sex scenes um, because she enjoyed her her work and she really wanted to show it on screen but then throughout making um feb like um editing the process um it, it didn't feel right anymore to have this um like it it is not in my film because we are focusing on other parts we are focusing on more on the characters more on the on different things so it's actually not comparable in that sense yeah. But but uh, I, I I because of this question of explicity and uh, also thank you very much for all the the I like the w the and I like this way of like saying okay in in the way you were describing the film it could be a porn film no like uh, with all this penetration no and uh, I like this lecture no and uh, <laughs> and uh, I appreciate that uh, that there is uh, I think the w w um, what you say humor is also things which came out of the situation no? and I appreciate that this. Uh, uh, energy is like transported and yeah, it's it like uh, um, um, it goes to the to the public no? yeah <laughs> and and uh, but this question of explicity and non explicity what do you show and what don't and I think like uh, I had this uh, conversation also with Jürgen uh, late uh, before we s entered the cinema and um, I think it is also uh, something which depends a lot about the context no and uh, to yeah. whom do you show uh, and well, whose who's sex do you show? Is it like yeah. actors or is it uh, protagonists or like protagonists in a sense of like real people mm -hmm. doing it? So, yeah. Yeah, of course, like in the context of uh, of uh, my film, uh, it's a, um, like it's a, a fiction. Yeah, it's, it's like a fictional film, yeah. universe. No, it's really Definitely, clear yeah. that uh, this is not like a documentary or yeah. uh, it's not. I'm not like. And uh, even if you do it in a documentary, it's always for the camera, you yeah. know when a camera is present it's in sex scenes it's always yeah. different uh, it's always uh, for Valentina, the camera. I have a question you know so because you have this I would call it meta level you know th there's a scene when the police comes in 
It is like the Inquisition in the Middle Ages, you know, so kind of, you know. Yeah, but he's What funny. I, he's yeah. not really inquisiting. No, he's not just like, Of course okay, it's funny. Yeah. But, you know, there is a scene <laughs> and they are talking to the farmer. And, you know, so, and that's what you said before, that, uh, the f you know, the film is very intimate. But then the police asked the farmer, Yeah, what did you do? You know, and he said, yeah, I had to do some strange things. And then strange things is always, yeah, forbidden sex or so whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do sex? sex? <laughs> and then, you know, they didn't do, because in the film they don't do this official sex. He said, yeah, I had to sniff on people. You know, and sniffing or so, th this is even more, I think, intimate. And people really recognize that this is related to sexuality, you know. So, not, but we are living in a society where a lot of people are really estranged from all this, you know. So, and it's so funny. And I was wanted to know from you because I know it was a lot of improvisation. So, did was the dialogue scripted or did the non-professional actor say it by himself okay no, no like the uh, there was like uh, the interrogations is a good uh, example of how we kind of like constructed these dialogue scenes no because uh, um f like uh, the police had a clear orientation on what they're gonna investigate so not on the disappearance of the director valentin but uh, on, the, on the intimacy of the people and uh, trying to figure out uh, what was happening in the shooting, but with uh, interest, no? Like in being intrigued, like in a way of he would like to participate no? in the shooting, like if he would ha have loved to be there as well, no? And so that's his, that was, his, uh, that was um, the direction I gave him. And uh, he didn't know what uh, interrogated people were going to answer. And they, uh, they I just told them uh, to either tell what they really saw during the shooting, because we shot chronolo chronologically, so uh, th they already lived the first part of the film, as the spectator lived the first part of the film when we started the interrogations. And uh, sometimes I gave them an attitude or uh, some lines or, you know, like, for example, uh, some things were more developed, like uh, the guy who has his profile on Gay Romeo and things like, or, uh, and some characters had a relation already, which made them maybe more or less suspicious, like the lovers, you know, and uh, things like this. But uh, the interrogations were like real interrogations because... Uh, the police was really like uh, investigating and not knowing what they're gonna find. So it's like, uh, and uh, so in this case, I, I think uh, at the end, it's also like we, we, we go into the editing room with a lot of material. And I think these moments uh, which we kept, no, which you like, uh, f where you're talking about the, like uh, sniffing on someone. And uh, I think are also uh, in a way like, uh, For me, it was also things that would uh, uh, have a resonance with the character and with his own, um, maybe with his own kind of intimacy and also with what we saw, no, in a way of the image. So it was like, uh, at, 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 at the same time, it was like a associative logic which helped us to construct and at the, s at the same time, it was also things that they, like it's all like, uh, all the dialogues were like gifts almost, no? Like, they, because... Uh, so I feel, uh, and what was so nice was the context allowed uh, them to be very uh, open, and so we had also access to their uh, intimacy. Yeah, but I still, have, I'm, you know, that's my opinion. Is kind of, you know, then all the police people is kind of, oh, did they do sex or so? You know, so, so if you like, we cannot really talk about sex, but everybody's interested. Was there something going on or not? You know, so, so it made it for me a kind of, you know, what is this English word? Lecherous, you know, so, so. But now I have another question, you know. Uh, may maybe they reflect the strict society, you know, or like some kind yeah, of like being intrigued. Yeah, but did they do this consciously? Or, or is this 
the real person or is this your non-professional actor or so? How do you see this, you know? So is this, you know, I don't know the name of the real person, you know, so is this what he's thinking really, how he's approaching this subject or is it the character, the non-professional character he's playing? I'm not sure about it, so it's really mixing. But then there's this other scene, you know, you know <laughs> so what I would see say is, you know, you are uh, also what I wanted to say is, you know, the scenes in the first 20 minutes, you know, so your film has what is, you know, nowadays you say you have a diverse cast. You know, this I hate too, because it should be selbstverständlich that you ha should have a cast like this, you know, and, you know, so, so, I th you know, this you make for me either. very good, you know, so, and you have different body types, you know, you have older people, you have people of color, you know, all this stuff. And when they touch each other or so, you know, it's very, for me, very sensual, which you don't find in porn films, you know, in porn films, porn performers act and it has nothing to do with reality, you know. So in your film, even still it's fiction, it gives you a little bit more feeling. So, and therefore also, you know, it works as a porn film because I think certain scene can arouse people, you know. So people are not only aroused when they see tits, vulva and dicks and penetration or so. They can be, or, or your fetish scenes, you know, you have a lot of fetish scenes in the film. Even like, I don't know, uh, a, f a person who likes accordions and how she treats the accordion could be get off on this fetish, you know, so. But then you have the scene with the police guy who has this so-called, you know, what you would call in uh, a point of a come scene, you know, so. And this looks so fake to me. So this is really, you know, you know that this person is totally pretending, you know, totally which pretending. Scene? Which scene? Are you talking the police about? Ca the uh. policeman who's uh, having sex with the car ah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. he's uh, having his ej ejaculation. Yeah, that's a performance. Yeah. That's so, but how did you, um, you know, what did you tell the person how to play this scene, you know, so or what did you have in mind? You're talking about the policeman? Yeah, the policeman. Yeah, I, I think what... A, a lot of these things are also uh, most of the sex scenes were like uh, performances in a way of like uh, we didn't uh, we didn't elaborate them in the same way we elaborated the interrogations no which were like uh, a long processes of uh, uh, shooting like uh, also ha creating a lot of material no in terms of uh, time and uh, and and sta staying in the same room uh, shooting and uh, shooting and shoot and I and with the sex scenes it was much more like okay today we're going to have we're going to go to the forest we're going to do this scene and then uh, um, it was like uh, we were always like a very small crew you know which uh, also created the form of uh, intimacy um, and then uh, uh, we did it maybe w once, twice, no? And uh, we had our way to f to film these scenes, so we knew, like, uh, we, we we had our uh, decoupage. How do you call it? Like the way you're gonna. We, we knew, like, uh, we we knew how we're gonna frame, and so uh, basically we like uh, the performances. They last like maybe for half an hour, and then. Uh, you know, like, uh, and, and that was it, no? And so it was also something we were really living in this moment, no? And um, and I think uh, maybe in this moment of uh, when he's, the policeman is doing his uh, ejaculation, which is very uh, artificial, right? And uh, uh, also with the lights, but also the slow motion. And then, and there it was really a bit like, uh, almost as he's having his uh, little fiat, like also like uh, being on stage and having his theatrical moment, no? Like uh, it was also the setting with like uh, when we were shooting it where people were standing around, no? And uh, basically I, 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 we, we also had like more elaborated uh, ways of how he could have uh, sex with the car, also in the inside and we tried different like uh, uh, w ways of like how he could penetrate and being penetrated by the car and at the end we choose something which was m much more light no and like a bit uh, maybe is more like anecdotic no not so uh, profound can we 
uh, grab some questions from the audience if we have some. Maybe someone has a question. There's one. There's one there. <laughs> I don't see you guys because there is a light in my. Yes. Yeah. Uh, just uh, nothing. Nothing special. I'm. I'm gonna ask you about uh, "Idiots" by Lars von Trier. Have you inspired by this? No, because it's definitely that you're showing uh, the group of people. Uh, they have something like liberation about them themselves. They desire everything. Their uh, I don't know nature, or strange way or something. Uh, yeah, did you, did you think about ideas by Trier? Right, that's it. Um, I. I I don't know. I could not say that I've thought about it is from three, and I, I, I'm uh, I never saw the film, <laughs> idiots. But uh, um, I I think um, maybe it's also this space, no, like uh, of the f I don't know, like it, it, I don't cannot react to the idiots, but maybe also this forest, no, as a as a place of transformation. Maybe that's also some I don't know, and then the, the like it's also like the. Um, I don't know, like a place of uh, of tales, or like where uh, you go into the forest and suddenly, like uh, you disappear in the forest, and how you come out of the forest, no? And I kind of like, I think this this I liked, and maybe w when you like question of uh, references, I just had like one clear reference, which was for me a uh, Laura Palmer from Twin Peaks, I, no? I and the Twin Peaks uh, yeah. reference to my film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was this kind of like uh, yeah. this uh, plastic cr cr crown, you know, and uh, and the makeup. We were inspired by the makeup of Laura Palmer, and uh, but also when they find the hair, it's like kind of like the ear, somehow in a weird way, kind of yeah. like wh in, in twin when they find the ear in when they yeah. when they find the ear uh, in the David Lynch. Yeah, and of course, so like the also this police, like. Uh, um, maybe also and also the forest no even the trees are the same uh, it's this Douglas fir yeah. is the same tree in uh, they plant in France which you find also in the forests of uh, of Twin Peaks yeah. and uh, and I don't know like there was some maybe also this kind of like uh, the forest as a mysterious place no as a transformation place maybe that was so, some that was some kind of like uh, um, a, a clear inspiration no? Um, yeah. With the forest, I have a question. How did they get actually from France to Mexico? <laughs> it's like I really liked it. Um, okay, we we'll continue in Mexico. We are sometimes somehow he's hugging a banana tree. But uh, how uh, did I miss something, or is it just supposed to Through be the totally cut? surrealistic? Yeah. There was a cut. There was a cut. I know, <laughs> but it's it's the surrealist moment is supposed to be. I'm. It's supposed that I'm like. Yeah. Uh, the fire and the water, no? Duck, it's this like uh, ah, the when they burn, uh, they burn yeah. the body and then suck the water of the the sea, no? And uh, we're with the the fishermen in Mexico. Yeah. And at the coast. so they drove all the way. I mean, no, I don't know. Like it's like okay. this. Uh, ah, how they? You want to know? Like uh, no, it's just, it doesn't matter actually. It was just maybe okay, it. Let's go, let's maybe continue. he took a boat. <laughs> yeah. Okay, they took the He's boat. He's a very romantic fella. Okay, <laughs> yeah, <it's> like that. <laughs> There's one more there. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I just wanted also to uh, first thank you very much for the movie. I really enjoyed it and. I was also maybe to add to the references that I have now a theory that like the movie itself is very performative, right? And I personally as an audience, I saw really lots of references to other movies. And now I'm, when I'm hearing that it wasn't intentional, I'm thinking that maybe because you made a movie kind of about a movie, it opened a portal <laughs> to all of the other movies, which like kind of talked a bit through it. And yeah, I think it's, yeah, I think it's just very interesting that there were lots of things which were also talking through from the cinematographical mm -hmm. world and the porn world also. I, I think th this is very interesting, the thing of uh, 
because I don't know, I also, before I was watching, uh, before I was doing films, I was watching a lot of films and uh, I think maybe, and uh, uh, I still continue watching a lot of films and I, I, I enjoy watching films and I enjoy uh, cinema in general. And I think this maybe is something uh, so subconscious, no? And uh, I, it's, it's interesting the, the way, uh, I got very different uh, references for the film and uh, I kind of enjoy to hear like what uh, people, w which references people project into the film. Well, uh, just, there's another one? May I? Okay. Uh, I, I feel there's something missing in tonight's action, which is maybe a link between the films. Uh, and I'm wondering whether I'm just missing the link or, the, or whether, whether there is no link. And I was doing something <laughs> now, <laughs> <laughs> trying to do maybe a different link. I mean, with, with Valley Export films at the end, I mean, today, watching the, the Valley Export film at the end, I was, the question about uh, explicitly explicitly and versus uh, disappearance it, it came to me uh, watching the valley export film actually and the relationship between uh, pornography and advertising as, as well uh, appears in, in that film I mean in terms of, of theme but there's another connection that I it made me think uh, actually watching the the valley export film that uh, I mean from from themes I, I think Advertising, pornography, they're always uh, on, on the three films. But there's also a shifting genre in Valley Export films, right? And I didn't notice, because the, it starts as a, as a kind of performance, then there's this kind of essay, video art with uh, publicity inscribed in the bodies and this experimentation with, with the, the techniques of the, the, the time, but also in, a, in an essayistic form. But it ends like a melodrama, right? With the, the couple, happy couple in a, in, a, in a beach, in a club or something, right? And I, I, was, I, I didn't realize that uh, Yaela film also has a shifting genre because when the film starts, you don't realize it's a political film. It's a stream of images so fast, and it's such material uh, that you don't pay attention to what the publicity is saying. Just in the end, you realize the film is, is a political film. But for, for the most of it, you just go to the, with the flow, right? And of course, in Valentin's films, there is a shifting genre all the time. Re you, you start with, I mean, the first 20 minutes are something, and then they become a crime, f a crime film, but in the middle, uh, there is all the investigation, but it's uh, throughout the film. I think the most, the, for me, the the most the the most important genre is comedy. Uh, throughout the film, I mean, it's it's a comedy, but the sh there is a shifting genre all the time. There's a zombie film inside. There is this forest in the night, and the, of course, uh, this sensual film. Uh, I think the three films has have ways of shifting genres and dealing with genres. Perhaps uh, maybe we could go back to Jaela before, to, so she could join the conversation about this this question. Hay una especie de cambio de género. Es como un cambio. Sí, lo aprendí. Perfecto. Que de hecho es algo que noté cuando leí el programa que Missing in Action, eh, que es, es, lo político aparece donde pareciera no haber nada político, ¿no? que es algo que, que lo pensé a partir de leer el programa. Um, she said that yes, there is some uh, shift of, uh, of, of in, the, in the film because when she uh, saw first the name of this section, the Missing on, on ac in Action, uh, she said that yes, no, this, this, uh, this is, a sh is a shift no, that she wants to, to, to make. That would uh, the politi lo politico, hay politico donde no es lo politico, no? The, uh -huh. the, that the political appears where there is, maybe no, nobody knows that there is something political there. Pero creo que eso también es la potencia del cine y del archivo, no? Yeah, that's the power of the of the of the cinema and the, and the, this document, this archive, no, that to to, to bring this political section also. Sí, es esa capacidad de poder releer las imágenes con una puesta en presente. Okay, 
um, trying to reread uh, re this uh, situation uh, to bring to the present uh, through these archives. The images. The images. Y por eso para mí era importante que se mantenga la calidad, que se vea que es una publicidad. Uh, that's why uh, one of the intention was to maintain that this is an advertisement, in fact, no? to maintain that quality. Y que detrás de eso aparecía una huella y aparecía la huella de un cuerpo que a la vez está desaparecido al día de hoy. Uh, and use this to uh, show also that behind of this, of this advertisement, there is uh, the footprints of there is a body, the missing body, no? There is a missing person there. Yeah? For me, when I saw the film, you know, I'm not more interested, but I'm interested. I, the three films deal with body representation, you know. So in Yaela's film, there are images from the 70s advertisement, and it's totally heteronormative representation of women, you know, so from the 70s. And Valley Export's film is from 1986. And what I like in Valley Export, I don't know, people know Valley Export's work, you know. It deals a lot with the body, and you know, I like. I found it very funny how she found this like clone of Arnold Schwarzenegger, who represents this hyper masculinity, and then you have Valentin's film, who shows different kind of body representation. So this was for me also a connection for the film films. Perhaps Valentin in general can comment. How do you react to the to the other films, right? When you saw your film among the other ones, what was the connection that appeared for you, or yeah, if there uh, was one? No, I mean for uh, Yael's film, I felt like the disappearance uh, of the of this actress is very serious. No, whereas in my in my case, it's so uh, in in a way. Of course, it also has like I mean I mean it has also. Um, uh, maybe in the film it's also drama, no, inside my film, but then at the same time it's also, um, it's not so uh, significant politically what is happening to um, to my character and what was, was happening to the actress. So I was, uh, I, I was re thinking about this, what, what, what could that mean, no, like this... Uh pero también ap aparece eso, creo que en las escenas de, de los policías, ¿no? Cuando preguntan acerca de la sexualidad y sobre su intimidad, hay ahí también algo en cómo es, es el Estado de alguna manera operando sobre esos cuerpos y aparece en tu película. Um, she said that also there is um, some kind of a coincidence when the police starting um, asking, ¿no? Uh, there is the um, the strength of the of the also of the state, ¿no? Trying to uh, trying to know about the, the, the bodies. Yeah. Someone from the audience? Uh, where's where's Danny? Oh. En relación a lo que decías um, sobre la representación heteronormativa, recordé que eh, hay una película, um, Roy Hudson Home Movies, que... Uh, she's mentioning a film uh, called Rocky Hudson yes, Home Movies. That, yeah. um, That, uh, they um, utilizan archivo de películas donde aparece este actor, Rod Hudson, y a partir del montaje es donde se develan otras cosas, como la sexualidad que estaba en ese momento reprimida y se puede hablar, pero después de mucho tiempo, ¿no? a través de con esas mismas imágenes que fueron creadas, que representaban una idea de heteronormatividad, una representación, eh, vueltas a editar 20 años después, con esas mismas imágenes aparecen estas otras cosas. Want to translate? Ah, okay. Uh, <laughs> she's mentioning yeah. that in this film they pick uh, a lot of Rock Hudson films, like heteronormative films, films made for a uh, heterosexual audience, and then uh, with the editing it appears a lot of different facets, like homosexuality and uh, I mean the other facets of the of the character, right, of the actor. Yeah, of course, it's amazing. Well, then can you can you perhaps develop your idea? Maybe I, I can I cut you a little bit. 
Ah, no, you didn't. <laughs> it uh, was a question. I, I didn't have a question also. I just wanted to let you know that the, the sparkling wine is in the glasses already, which is a problem, uh, but I don't want to put time pressure on you. <laughs> well, yeah, we sh I have another we shouldn't let them get flat. <laughs> no, but I have another question to Valentin, you know, so because, you know, you were thinking about how explicit your film will be, and, you know, we talked before, and when I saw your film, of course, I recognized Bishop Black and Natalie Portnoy, whom I know personally. They are, you know, pawn performers, and they have been attending the festival in Berlin, the Bond Film Festival, for years. So, and, but, you know, we talked a little bit about it, but, you know, how did the re you react when, you know, um, that they didn't really do explicit scenes. And, you know, in, and what I liked very much this scene is when the police guy is asking Natalie, you know, so what are you doing? And blah, blah, blah. And then the police guy, you know, I thought to have this idea, you know, uh, so is it easier to get money to do sex movies? No, you know, and she says, Natalie says, yes, I think so, but for sure it's not easier to get money for doing porn films. But, you know, um, how did they react, you know, so or can you say, well, you know, how did they feel in being part of the film, you know, so? Uh, 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 being part and of, of not doing explicit sex scenes. Yeah, no, not at all, you know, so the you know, they saw what you do, so, um, and you know, they they saw that it's not an explicit film, so how did they feel, or what did they say, and how did mm -hmm. you communicate? At the beginning, uh, I think uh, the whole uh, dispositive of, like, uh, like, just knowing, like, having some key uh, information, no, about what is going to happen inside the seas, and scenes this was like uh, vertiginous for many of the actors but then this was something uh, which uh, kind of like uh, worked out well with time no like uh, this kind of like also this idea of abundance no? like of abundance of control no and uh, i think this is also due to the the um, the, the mise-en-scene is made uh, by like having creating situations with least very long no and uh, so people um actually like stay in this situation for a long time and kind of uh, start to incarnate the situation no and i think uh, i think this is one thing that where they were a bit like uh, they felt a bit like uh, maybe at the beginning like uh, what we're doing where we're like going no like where is this like and uh, maybe a bit the same uh, sensation a spectator could have when he's watching the film, no? And um, but then uh, they started to kind of like understand, no? And uh, and also the thing with uh, at the beginning I, when I invited them and I asked them if they would like to persist participate, I also said like uh, I don't I'm I'm going to have sex scenes and I don't know how explicit they're going to be. And uh, and I, maybe I'm go I want to have like explicit scenes, and that's why I want to work with people who are used to do explicit scenes, no? And uh, and um, and so uh, in <laughs> Natalia was also like uh, kind of like both maybe were waiting at some point, like wh when we gonna do, you know? Like when could this moment come? And uh, and. Uh, some like she was also proposing like uh, scenes and um, at the end we didn't do them and maybe it was not so like the, it was maybe also more uh, organic to include them uh, into the crew as like uh, the farmers are included in the crew and uh, the farmers are from the Limousin no, in France or like uh, as the Muches from Mexico are included in the crew and so like it's not uh, um, okay these are the actors and these are like uh, this kind of like uh, um, like no we, we we became these organic materials no <laughs> kind of like uh, which are more uh, is not kind of like uh, of doing also because they did um, more or less uh, not the police but the group is they're all doing the same things kind of and uh, so i felt like it would not be right to have them do something like uh, very different from the others no 
I don't have. I have a, a last question to Yaela then. Um, as you referred to the images of the Rock Hudson uh, film, so, and you said these images were re -re -read, or would be re-read today. So how would you read nowadays the images of the publicity or the representation of um, the women we see, or at least not just Marianne, because they, she has been there with other people. How would you read their bodies or their representation today? Sí. No, it's okay. Um, sinceramente, yo no estudio la publicidad, no, no me dedico a eso. Solo vi eh, las publicidades que me entregaron para, para hacer el cortometraje. Okay. Um, sí, sí, sí. Okay. Uh, first, uh, speaking on her film, she, she only uh, know she do not study all advertisement in general, but she only focus on that advertisement in this case. But. Pero eh, sí, de hecho, una de mis compañeras al final lo hizo. Quedamos muy asombradas cuando va ah, igual. Lo sabemos, pero lo, cuando lo ves, cobra que gracias. Cobra otra, otro sentido que um, ella quería hacer un western a partir de, de estas imágenes, porque era realmente muy heteronormativo todo lo que veíamos. Pero oh, una de sus colegas, ella quiere hacer una cosa diferente, y ella también quiere hacer con este advertimiento que obtuvo en el mismo uh, uh, western film, ¿no? On this. Eh, y, y creo que son modelos que al día de hoy se repiten, más aún en, en mi país, donde el Estado sigue operando sobre nuestros cuerpos y sobre las imágenes. And these are like uh, examples that are repeating right now, and she says that it's in her own country uh, that where the state is um, uh, operating over the, the, the bodies. Pero siento que por suerte existe el cine <laughs> y existe Barbara Hammers que pueden a partir de, 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 de utilizar esas imágenes que fueron creadas con otro sentido, con o, queriendo imponer otro tipo de representación, se apropian de ese mismo material y generan otras. And that uh, hopefully ex, uh, the cinema exists and the cinema could use this image and to try to bring another, another message, ¿no? Now. Thanks, everyone. I think we're being kicked off, so. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks, everyone. Thank Good evening.